Hello, and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go through how to set up load balancing using Azure API management. Now, there's a few different ways in Azure to set up front end load balancing. We're going to take a look at how simple it is to set it up using API management. Now, why would you want to do load balancing inside API management as compared to something like Azure Load Balancer? Well, it might be quite simply due to cost. If you're already using API management, it's very simple to have a single instance of APIM and then route calls to multiple backends. So if you had multiple standard edition logic apps that you wanted to expose through API management, you could use this process to route calls to two separate instances running in totally separate data centers to achieve a high availability solution for those logic apps. It would also give you the ability to be able to take a whole set of logic apps offline to do a deployment and then cycle back through. So you would have very minimal, if not zero downtime when doing a logic app redeployment. We're gonna take a look at two different ways to do load balancing in APIM. The first is gonna be a simple inbound policy that's gonna use a random number to select between two endpoints. And then we're gonna see how to set up backends in load balancer inside of API management. These are relatively new features inside of APIM. So it's exciting to take a look and see how this would work. As for me, I would prefer the latter solution. It's a little more robust and gives you a lot more flexibility, but depending on your needs, using a simple policy might work as well. So let's jump in and take a look at how to use API management to do load balancing. To get started, I'm gonna jump into my Azure portal where I've already logged myself in and opened a few key components that I'm gonna talk through. First off, I wanna show you that I have two different Logic App standard workflows deployed. Here is orders under endpoint one and the same orders under endpoint two. And I also, just to show you how to do large message routing, have another endpoint called large order, which is another Logic App. And we're gonna use this to route messages that are larger in size. So I have these all set up. First, uh, endpoint one and endpoint two are exactly the same code, just deployed to two different logic apps. So these could be in two separate regions, even inside your Azure solution. And we're going to first take a look at the anatomy of what this HTTP call looks like coming into this logic app. Now we're focusing here in this demo on using logic app standard as the backend. This could really be any backend in Azure or anywhere else, just simply doing your load balancing inside of API management. We're just demoing it here using Logic App Standard. This is the full raw URL, and it breaks down into this as kind of the base part of the address, followed by the specific information for the trigger. Now, this information is going to be the same between the two endpoints. Where we get down to these query string parameters is we get information that could be different between the two endpoints. Of course, this SIG is actually the key that's used to authenticate into the HTTP call, and this is gonna be different between the two endpoints for sure. So we'll just kind of keep this in mind as we build out our solution that we're gonna use some of these different components. So let's jump over to our API management, and I'm gonna show you two different ways to set up this load balancing. The first is gonna be a simple inbound policy that's gonna do the routing itself inside that policy, and next is gonna be using backends and load balancing components inside of APIM. We're actually gonna use the backend components for the first part, just to demo that you can use the backend components together with an inbound policy. So let's get started by looking at this backends component under APIs. This allows you to configure your runtime URL information right here in configuration. Now you can also do this inside your API directly, but if you do it here, it can be referenced by multiple APIs, for example. So if you wanted to change your backend logic app or change your backend runtime URL, you could do it in one place here and it could impact multiple APIs. So if that's something that you would want, you would want to set it up this way because it gives you more flexibility. We're just going to look at this endpoint one policy that I have set up and it's pretty straightforward to set these up under properties. You just select Azure resource. I select my logic app and then I simply paste in here the first part of the URL. This is the non-specific information uh, up to the API. Now, I could also use custom URL and paste in any custom URL I'd like here, and I'd simply paste that here. I could have went this route as well, went with the Azure resources, not 100% sure what the difference is, but this was easy to select and pre-populate that. So we're going to reference this endpoint one policy in our API. There's some other settings here that we're going to take a look at when we come in and configure this for API management load balancing in just a moment. So I'm going to jump back into my API 
And let's take a look at the single API that I've created called router. And we're going to look at route by policy here. And let's see how we would configure that. So I do this under my inbound load, my inbound processing section here. And I have all this code that you can easily copy and paste it out. Just reference the blog post below down in the comments. You can get all this code. I have it all commented in here as well. And let's try to make this a little better, easier to see. I don't think I can make it too much better, actually. And we can see here where I've set up uh, two different ways to route this. Now, this is just using a random number generator to determine whether it goes to endpoint 1 or endpoint 2. And once it selects a random number, it will simply go to endpoint 1 or endpoint 2. Here in endpoint 1, I have set it up as the backend property to read from that backend that we set just saw just a moment ago in configuration. So here it's going to pull that base URL from here and po populate it with the rest of this rewrite URL. It's going to populate everything here, including all our query string parameters that we can see here. And then the other approach is to use endpoint two, where I'm going to actually configure the backend service URL here just like this without using the configuration that we just saw that's sitting outside of this API. And again, it's gonna use this same query string parameters, but this time it's going to the other endpoint. It's gonna to go to the uh, endpoint two with different query string parameters. And then just for the heck of it, I wanted to show how we could interrogate the content length of our inbound message here to look if the message is over a certain size. So in this case, if it's over one meg, I wanna route it to what's gonna be called this large order processing. It really should just be large message processing, but this gives us the ability to be able to route larger messages to other endpoints. This could come in handy when we try to interpret the messages if we were going to mess with the message body. In APIM, for example, there's a whole bunch of different size limitations based on the version of API management you're using. If you're using V1, you have much more flexibility. It's up to like 500 megs they can query into. But if you're using V2, it is actually a two meg limit if you're going to parse into that message body. So in this case, if it was over two meg, for example, we might want to not parse into the message. I'm not parsing into it here, but if we had to, we could route it then to a separate process to handle that. So um, that is why I do have this large message processing here to route it somewhere else. So it's really that simple to kind of set this up. And this will just use a random number. We'll go to endpoint one or endpoint two. And then if it's large, it's going to go there. So let's just see how this runs real quick. Have this set up in Postman. Now, just calling my route to policy here. And I see 111. And I'm just going to run this a few times. And you can see it's not round robining. It's just going to be a random number generator. So sometimes we're going to get the same results back and back. And uh, pretty much as we expected is going to different destinations. Now let's go ahead and paste in a large payload here. I just used a website to generate large amount of random text. And we're just going to show you how when we paste this in here and send this. And now it is uh, determining that it is a large message. So we are able to route this message to a different logic app and process that results kind of based on the size of that endpoint. Um, now this is great. This is kind of a, an easy, simple way to do it. But let's take a look at some of the, it's a relatively new feature, the actual load balance component of API management and see how simple that is to set up. And let's jump back into APIM. And we're going to come back to API management. And we're going to take a look back at our uh, backends that we had took a look at just a moment ago. And in this case, we have our endpoint one and we have our endpoint two set up here. So let's take a look at endpoint one. And this is very similar to what we had before where I have this configured. But what I went ahead and did here is set up these authorization credentials. And I can come over here to query parameters. And here's my four query parameters that I have defined here. So again, the best thing about setting this up here is if I want to reference it in multiple APIs and multiple inbound policies, it's all configured here in one central place. So if the uh, API key changes, for example, going to my back end, I can simply change it here. It's going to flow through to everything. Um, in addition to setting things up here, like this is an actual value that I've configured right here, but you can also configure these as secrets. 
So this is in point two, again, my query parameters. And this here is actually a named value pair. And it's just an endpoint two key. And this is defined over here under named values. And in this case, this named value endpoint key two, endpoint two key is just defined here, but it could also be a reference to key vault as well. So it's very easy to plug in these uh, secrets from key vault, plug them right in here, keep your API keys all centralized and standard in your key vault, and then just reference them here. So it's really nice and straightforward. And so you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of different ways to kind of accomplish the same thing, kind of depending on your needs. But what else is uh, hugely beneficial about this is I have the ability to set up circuit breakers. So I haven't defined any here, but the circuit breakers would allow you to automatically essentially fail over and change your routing in the API management configured load balancer between your endpoints. So I could set up a circuit breaker here and say if endpoint two returns a certain error code X number of times, but we'll take it out of rotation for 60 seconds or something like that. So it allows you a lot of ability to configure these here. Now, once I have my two endpoints set up, endpoint one, endpoint two, you come over here to this load balancer, and here's where you simply create your load balancer. You create a new load balance pool, a new pool, and inside here, you simply go under properties and you select, actually under backends, and you select what backends you want to belong to this pool. And the best thing about this is this is, again, going to be used across all APIs that are referencing this. So if I have seven different APIs, all referencing endpoint one and two, and I say I want to redeploy my logic apps, I can simply come in here and take one out of rotation, take endpoint two out of rotation, save this, do my redeployment to my logic apps in my second location, and then simply come back here and switch them around. And now I'm gonna be routing all my calls to that new endpoint. And this is what I see as one of the best reasons, the best use cases for using API management for uh, your load balancing. Uh, it just allows you to be able to keep your solution up and redeploy those logic apps, redeploy that backend, whatever it may be, functions or logic apps or any other backend endpoint. And it's all just going to be dynamic here. Now to reference this in your uh, APIs, let's come over here under router and we'll say a route by load balancer, very similar to what we saw before is done in a policy, but it's a much more straightforward policy. So we do have, there's no random numbers here. There's no, you know, one, two, three. There's just one reference to this load balanced backend endpoint here, this endpoint main, and that's the name of that backend load balancer. And then we have the root part of our ULL, URL here. Now I could have configured this inside endpoint one and endpoint two if I wanted, just putting it here to kind of show you how you would set it up here. And also here it's important to have the copy unmatched parameters to true. So when query string parameters are um, initiated in here, they're, they're gonna be copied. If, if they're set. So by setting this up here, I'm allowed, it'll automatically generate the backend endpoint one and endpoint two in a road round robin scenario. Oh, I forgot to mention, you can also configure that as well if you don't want round robin. You can set up a weight system and have it heavily weight one endpoint over another. So if you had multiple endpoints here, you could like three or four across different regions and stuff like that. I've even seen examples where you can take it even deeper than that and do additional kind of, of routing that, that you may see fit on this. So there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with these policies. It gives you a lot of flexibility and it's really feature rich, uh, but this just kind of touches the surface on how easy it is to kind of come in here and get started with these. So this right here is just gonna round robin around those endpoints. And let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to go to my load balancer and we would expect to see a much more round robin one, two, one, two scenario, because we are in fact have that configured that way. So then that's exactly what we see here. And if I do want to come in here just to show you how we can take one of these out of rotation and back under my API here, let's go to back ends, load balancer and back ends. And I'm just going to take one out of the loop, save that. And while we're here, I should note, this is where you would set up if you wanted to change the weights and priorities. You simply select that. And uh, I only have one endpoint in my load balance pool now, but I would be able to set this up if I had multiple endpoints here. So right now we'll just leave it at 
where we had it. And let's jump back over here. And now all of our quests will go to the two endpoint because that's the only one left in our load balance pool. So what you've seen here is just a very simple way to get up and running with load balancing inside of API management. There's several different ways, a couple different ways to do load balancing inside Azure. Azure Front Door and Gateways, kind of some of the other ways, all kind of have pros and cons. This is definitely a very simple, straightforward way, not a lot of networking involved, no DNS setup, anything like that. It just gives you a simple way to load balance around two different endpoints. Like I said, primary use case I would see is this, is to have multiple logic apps and be able to redeploy them with minimal downtime. So with that, hopefully you like what you saw here. There are two blog posts that reference both of these check them out in the comments below. They do have all the policies that you can simply copy and paste to take a look at on your own. And if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.